if you have ever gone driving and said to yourself, yeah, absolutely, we can take that, no problem, only to realize a little too late that you were driving the other vehicle, then you're a kindred spirit and should probably hit that like and subscribe button. I'm sorry, babe. I'll get it out, I swear. Yeah, it's one of those days. I actually had the uh, the wife's car uh, for a little while. Had to do some had some automotive problems, and um, thought I'd come out here and make a video. Even have I, I got notes and everything. I was all prepared for it. Going over in my head. Kind of neglected some essential details like uh, that is not as outfitted for off-road as even something as mildly outfitted as the adventure wagon. At least I have a full-size shovel. Anyway, I want to talk to you guys today about uh, something I mentioned in that, that video that I really wasn't all that excited to make about the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. And the thing that I said was everything is propaganda. Just assume that every bit of news, every bit of um, social media content, everything you see about this is propaganda. And I got to thinking about that, and I said, you know, there's this video I've kind of wanted to do. Yeah, I thought I would do it later on, maybe. But uh, it seems like now is a really good time to do it with the Russia-Ukraine thing going on. Because I think sometimes it's a little easier for us to see this kind of stuff when it's going on over there. So hopefully by the time stuff like, you know, the midterm elections or, oh, God help us when it comes to the next presidential election, you know this stuff is going to be way too thick. we be swimming in propaganda. So what is propaganda? Um, it actually has a, it's, it's interesting origins. Um, the root word is the same root word as to propagate. So uh, when we start planting stuff, and the snow's almost melted, which is one of the reasons that thing got stuck. Um, but this time of year, we start propagating seeds into plants. So we spread them, right? Um, the first uh, recorded use of the word was actually a, uh, a Catholic, essentially their missions committee, where they got all these people together who were doing different missionary outreach type of things, and they put them together as a uh, propaganda committee. The idea of propagating the Catholic faith. Nowadays, the term has come to mean something a little bit different. Um, it's, in fact, most people hear propaganda, and you, you think lies, which, okay, uh, lying is a form of propaganda, at least as we use the term now, uh, pretty much use it to mean any kind of information or even content meant to uh, sway your opinion, to sway your beliefs. And typically we'll see it in the political sense, but I, I kind of want to expand your, your ideas of that, um, if you will. So, yes, uh, outright lies of propaganda, exaggeration, is propaganda. We've certainly seen enough of that in the last several years in many, many ways. Um, misdirection or omission would be propaganda. So if you, if everything you say is true, but you leave out crucial details, you're essentially lying by omission, right? It's deception. It's Deliberately done so to change people's minds and therefore propaganda. Um, even things designed to make you feel a certain way. So advertising is definitely a form of propaganda. Um, I, I think back to, I was reading about how, how the, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon came to be. And it's actually an interesting story because there were some people working for Jeep that dragged the company kicking and screaming into making that model. And the the off-road Kanabi tires that didn't, they almost didn't make it. Because the, the safety people said, no, no, we don't want that. That's, that's going to be, that's going to lower our, our safety rating. It's not going to handle as well on the road. It's going to make a lot of noise. The marketing department saved those tires because they said it looks great. 
you put that on a showroom floor on an, an advertisement just to show the thing going out there. Bone stock with those knobby tires. It looks great. It sells itself. That feeling. That's propaganda. Um, so now you start thinking about any of the stuff you see on YouTube, any of the stuff you see on, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, all this sort of stuff. It's propaganda. It's meant to make you think, feel, act a certain way. Um, yeah, paid reviews. That's a big, big thing nowadays. I mean, it's been a big thing since, I don't know, since forever. But you see it a lot more now, or at least it's more transparent what's going on. Um, actually, an interesting story I was reading about, uh, no, actually the YouTube video. YouTube video about one of the, the oldest science fiction tale. I'll, uh, I'll see if I find it again and link to that. Uh, but it was basically in response to people completely lying in uh, some of these ancient, what essentially would be a travel blog now. Um, I'll, I'll link to that. That's, it gives you an idea of, with as far as we've come technologically, man, people are still peopling out there, and nothing's really changed. We just got a little more creative about how we do it. <coughs> oh. Excuse me. Um, so what can we do about this? What can we do... I, not so much about this, but what can people do with propaganda, I should ask. Um, so obviously if you have a particular side of something, you can garner support for that. Uh, you need people to buy your product in the case of advertising. Um, you can sabotage your competitor. Um, imagine this. You have two competing, I don't know, just well, for the sake of discussion, we'll say dairy farmers. And one dairy farmer over here is very traditional, old school, like everything's done by hand, um, you know, pasture cattle, doesn't use any kind of fertilizer, doesn't use any kind of herbicides, pesticides. And this other one over here is very modern. And the modern guy says of the, the other guy, well, that, that method is horrible. That's, uh, you know, you're having, you're, you're not using medicine to treat your sick animals. You're just kind of isolating them and hope they get better. Um, you're not, you're not vaccinating them. You're not fertilizing the fields like you should be. You're just, you're all wrong. And tries to use that to get people to not buy from him and, or not buy from his competitor and buy from him. Now, the other guy says, uh, well, no, all this medicine you're pumping into your cattle is, is horrible for them, and uh, you shouldn't be doing that, and you're keeping them all confined here, and you're bringing in grain, and, and they shouldn't be fed grain. It's not how it's designed to, to eat. And do they both maybe believe this? Yeah, they do. I would think they do anyway. Let's just say for the sake of discussion they do. I made this up. Yeah, they both believe it. Um, it's still propaganda. It's designed to make you think, and therefore act a certain way. Um, and that's a fairly benign example. Uh, some other things that you could could do, um, you could wage psychological warfare on people, essentially uh, gaslighting. You can make people feel isolated, and like it's not even worth trying because they're crazy, and everybody in society thinks that they're crazy, even if they're not. Everyone in society thinks you're crazy. That's propaganda, Right? It gets a little darker, even, and uh, you can actually get um, people to fight with each other. Uh, you can you can get somebody, and you'll see this in the in wartime stuff. You can get your opponent to strike the first blow and actually attack you, which you think that's kind of counterintuitive. Don't you want to? Don't you want to be the one attacking? Well. In some situations, tactically, yes, the aggressor has a certain advantage, but then the defender has a huge advantage as well. And politically, if they attack you, you now have the political capital to then go after them and say, we're the good guys. We got attacked. If the shoe fits, wear it. I don't know if that does or does not apply to modern events. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, couldn't tell you. I know looking back through history, you can find examples of that, though. Um, but then you can also say, 
make two people, two factions that actually should be friends, should be allies, you can get them to attack each other. All right? Uh, the U.S. did this with the uh, Sunni and Shia Muslims over in Iraq. Um, by promoting division within these factions of that that side, that opposing force, they were able to weaken them. And they were too distracted fighting each other. Now, obviously, eventually that didn't go so well for the U.S., but understand that that actually was something that was going on over there. Um, I know that's... I'm not giving any secrets away. That's pretty well documented publicly. Um, oh, so what? What does this all mean? What does it mean for you? What is? What is? What should you do with this information? Um, first thing I, I really I want you to do is I want you to start looking for it, and I want you to learn to to kind of see through the propaganda. Because if everything is propaganda, how do you, how else are you going to get any kind of useful information? Information is valuable. Propaganda is not. I want to be able to distill, take that information, that, that core bit of truth, because the best lies are mostly, mostly truth. So if I can, can look at this and say, that's true. That's true. Actually, both these, all these points are true, but the way you've put them together is propaganda. I'm going to discard that, throw it over here, and I'm going to take the information, and I'm going to go and use my own brain power to look and see how I think this actually affects me and, and my life and the people around me. Um, so that's one thing. Um, kind of stemming out, growing out from that, if you will. You can. It gives you the power to not get distracted, to not have a little ADD moment and go, mm, ah, squirrel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight with my my buddy over here. Meanwhile, we actually should be helping each other and building each other up, and you know, building our community up. No, I'm just gonna get angry at him. Okay, don't do that. Go, <laughs> you know. Go build those relationships and bridges and, and don't get so caught up in petty squabbles that really don't even don't even benefit you or might not even involve you. Um, and then of course the other thing is uh, at some point at some point you need to kind of come to this awareness that you need to tell your story. There's a thousand, uh, there's, there's everybody out here has their own propaganda, their own agenda, their own um, things that they want to do with your story. Maybe they want to ignore you, maybe they want to um, cast you as supporting them, maybe they want to convince you to bring, to bring yourself and support them. Uh, maybe they want to cast you as their boogeyman that needs to be knocked down or, or undermined or, you know, what have you. Eventually, you're going to need to do this right here and put out a little propaganda of your own. Doesn't mean you have to lie, just that you tell your story. Because again, there's plenty of people who will tell your story for their benefit. In this day and age, when it's fairly cheap and easy to get information out there, why give them that power? All right? Just some stuff for you guys to think about, and uh, I'm going to get back to working on that disaster over there. And uh, until next time, get out, do some cool stuff, and y'all take care of each other. Okay? At least I've got a full-size shovel.